Hello, I'm Archie Luxury, and welcome to the program Fuckers. Hello, fuckers. And today I got a really interesting email from Ryan Hamilton. Okay, Archie, your channel took a turn for a positive when you did a small collection review. You have to remember, most folks who view your channel understand the difference between a luxury wristwatch and a, and a watch that poses as a luxury watch. That still leaves a category of watches that are not poses and not true luxury and not dog shit. You have co commented before that you like the Hamilton brand because it does not pretend to be something it is not. I happen to agree with you. So that said, I present a collection of four watches of uh, with my pictures of said watches that I think embody this idea and which I obtained for less than 2000 US dollars. Okay, the first piece in the lineup is a sports watch. It's a Breitling Super Ocean Professional. Um, he goes on to say, I know you like the Breitling Super Ocean Professional. You used to have one. It's a cool piece. It works with a t-shirt, a polo, a rolled up sleeve on a collared shirt. It's very versatile and understated. It's not bling like most Breitling. It's also not too big for a Breitling. I don't think I need to convince you. This is a good choice. For a sports watch. Yes, indeed, fuckers. I did, in fact, have a Super Ocean. And, uh, yep, they, they, they certainly can be had for uh, not a lot of money. That is true. The dress watch, he's chosen a Hamilton Intramatic 39 mil on steel. 550 US dollars. The Hamilton Intramatic is a very smart looking piece. Comes with a solid ETA 2892 movement, comfortable and high quality bracelet, and looks like a modern version of the original Intramatic. It has the 60s Hamilton logo, a beautiful sunburst style. It does not scream luxury, and it looks even better on a leather strap. It has roots in something real in Hamilton's history. It's not a JLC, but it's also not trying to be. It fits the space of a routine wear wearer as opposed to a vintage Omega there. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't mind. I've got to say this, it's very unusual. I don't actually mind it. The third thing is a sport dress watch, which is his Orient Star WZ0091EL on steel. 300 bucks! Orient Star is something of an anonymity for you, I'm sure. It's a solid in-house movement. Orient is actually Japan's largest in-house mechanical watchmaker. I love the blue dial. Nobody does blue dials better than Orient. For the price point, you can't get an in-house at this quality for less. It's not trying to be luxury. It's trying to be Orient. If I saw this watch without a logo, I could identify it as an Orient right away. This watch can work with a suit. It can work with a t-shirt. It fits in where the Breitling might not and where the Hamilton might not. It looks stunning on a deep, a nice deep brown leather strap there. And uh, I'm not a big fan of Orient watches. Uh, yeah, okay, we'll just, we'll just play with it for the moment. We'll play with it. Then finally... His vintage, his father's 1969 Omega Constellation. Omega Constellation, you really can't, you really can't shit on this piece. My grandfather gave it to my father after he returned from war. It was passed down to me. It runs today as well as it did 40 years ago. The watch works well off a suit, but I was, I'm was i trying to wear it sparingly. I'd like to send it in for a full overhaul, but I ex expect Omega to absolutely sucker punch me on the service fee. Why don't you send it to Kenny Nguyen, you dumb fuck? Send it to Kenny Nguyen. He'll, he'll do it at a great price. I think this qualifies as vintage luxury and fits that piece of the collection nicely. So Archie, you tell me, does it work as a collection? Did I do okay for under two grand? Do I really need the man on the moon or does the Breitling cut it? Do I need the JLC or does my combination of Omega and Hamilton suffice? Do I need a beta that works pretty well with everything or does my in-house Orient pull that off? 
Would you actually be ashamed of wearing any of these pieces? We specialize in the repair of Rolex and Patek Philippe watches. We've been doing the same thing for more than 25 years. We have a Rolex technician certified by Rolex who actually used to work for the company for many years, like if we're doing the work on the factory. We completely disassemble the watch and we put it to work, like brand new condition. When you get a pre-owned watch, it's like if you're getting a brand new unit. The only difference is the money. Yes, it's a very, very interesting decision here. What do I think? What do I think? Well, um, well, for starters, your Amiga, Amiga Seamaster, that was a, a carry-on gift there. Well, that really isn't free, is it? Most people don't have somebody who gives them that watch. You know, so you're, you're, you're quite, it's it's certainly a, um, but I mean, let's be, be honest there, three grand, could it get you some decent pieces? Let, let, let's just discuss it there, okay? <coughs> In my opinion, ah, uh, look, for two to three grand, you can get a mediocre collection. Uh, the Hamilton's kind of funky. I must say, I kind of like the, the Hamilton. It's kind of funky. The Breitling, yeah, it's still a compromise. That's why I got rid of mine. It's still a compromise. And, uh, it's, yeah, they're, 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 they're not bad value for money, I must admit. The Orient, no, no, don't, don't like the Orient. Don't like it at all. The Omega, Again, that's not really a free watch. Not everyone out there has a father who went to a grandfather who went to war and handed it down the line there. Uh, yeah, my old man tried to wriggle out of military service. He told them to fuck off. So I don't have that military breeding that you do. Uh, I'm not really prepared. None of my family's been prepared to die for their country my grandfather was a russian soldier he was captured by the germans the nasty fuckers who make lange and uh i gotta tell you the truth there does it work does it work look as a collection i'd give it a five okay it's a collection it's okay but you really do need to you really do need to add better pieces to it. I mean, look, let, let's be realistic there. Let's let's just knock these over. The Omega, sorry, the, the Breitling Super Ocean, that's for people who can't afford a sub. Okay, they're a bit dated. It's, it's okay for the money, but it, it, it's the weakest link in a collection. It's not the, the foundation stone. The Hamilton? Yeah, okay, the Hamilton stumped me, okay? Yes, it has stumped me, okay? It's uh it's it's a hipster's sort of watch. I don't think I could pull it off, but it's 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 stumped me, okay, yes. The Orient, don't fucking like it. I don't like the Orient sports watch. I'm sorry, it's just it just See, instead of the Orient, I'd have an Explorer 1 in there. That'd be much cooler. The Vintage Omega. That definitely, you should get that. Get Kenny Nguyen to do a service, okay? He won't rape you. Um, great bit of history there. Yeah, look, look, it, 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 it's got the makings of a collection. I wouldn't say it's a full-blown collection. But it's got the makings. You're moving in the right direction. And with a bit of wheeler dealing, we'd bring in a sub, get rid of that Breitling, bring in a sub. We'd get rid of that Orient and bring in an Explorer 1. And uh, I reckon we've got to put an Amiga, Amiga Speedmaster Man on the, on the moon in there, fuckers. So there you go. Yep, it's got the makings of a collection. But it ain't no fucking cigar. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you fuckers...
think of that. Nice one, Archie. At least you considered it.